interested in knowing mm. a little bit more about the coffee party. Wasn't there like some mm -hmm. sort of movement demonstration today mm -hmm. throughout the country? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, coffee party was kind of connected to all that, but it's really sparked by Wisconsin. So a bunch of groups decided to hold um, rallies supporting Wisconsin. It's critical that we engage on this subject about budgets. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we make these really hard decisions about the budget? What values do we use? What is all this about with the unions, right? So they had rallies at every single capital in all 50 states and D.C. with people showing up in freezing cold in some cases. And then there's this other movement called U.S. Uncut, inspired by a movement called U.K. Uncut, because in Britain they went through some really severe cuts. So they were saying, look, there are all these corporations that are dodging taxes, they're paying no taxes, or they owe like six billion taxes. And then you're asking us to sacrifice you know, education when you're not going after these tax dodgers. And then the richest man in Britain paid no taxes <laughs> because he said all his income came from his wife who is a resident of Monaco, which is a tax haven. So he was paying no taxes at all, even though he owned all these companies. And they were letting him get away with it. And he even had like a position as like an official advisor to the government. You know, and, but this goes on all over the world, including the United States. Bank of America didn't pay taxes last year. <laughs> Along with GE, I mean, all these companies pay very little taxes. And then they're cutting into our education and things like heating aid for the poor and the elderly, right? When we're not going after people, you know, purposely dodging taxes, right? So that shows you that either people are not aware of it or that they don't care. And I think that most people don't know how screwed up this is, how unfair this is. We can't just start cutting away at our social safety programs when we have these corporations that are really getting away with not only not paying taxes, they actually caused our recession that made us lose 30 million jobs, you know, and there was no real accountability and no punishment. And in fact, they lavished themselves with bonuses, the executives who led people to lose 30 million jobs. That's screwed up, right? But that's the world that we have right now. So unless we decide that we want to change that, it's not going to change. In the United Kingdom, what happened was people started holding these spontaneous, almost like flash mob protests. They would shut down stores. You know, they would go to uh, Vodafone that wasn't paying taxes, and they would shut down Vodafone, like do a sit-in. And they did this at the shops that this guy, Phil Green, owned, the one who wasn't paying any taxes at all. And slowly, people started, you know, talking about the, not talking about cuts, they were talking about tax dodging. So they were able to change the conversation, you know, so that the deficit was about tax dodging, not cutting programs. Mm -hmm. And right now, that's how it is in the United States, right? People who are talking about the deficit, they're talking about cutting spending, because they think that's the problem, and not the fact that we have this whole, you know, <laughs> set of institutions benefiting from our system, but not paying taxes. So imagine if we change the conversation so that you're talking about the tax loopholes, tax breaks, the subsidies that we give corporations. We give billions in subsidies to Exxon and Energy and big farms and pharmaceutical companies. I mean, if we shifted the conversation to that problem, you know, it'd be a completely different set of questions and different laws that would be enacted. So that's kind of what you know, Eric and I are trying to figure out is like, how can we, like they did in the United Kingdom, really change the focus so that that's what's talked about instead of cuts, because cuts will not help us get out of our recession. And there are very smart economists who keep talking, trying to warn us, 
It's like, don't cut. Even Goldman Sachs did a report recently saying these government cuts are actually going to hurt the recovery. We really do not know if there's going to be another recession and when it's going to be. So we could easily scare people into action. And the Tea Party is doing that. They hit the panic button. You know, out of control, government spending is going to ruin this country, right? This is leading to socialism and fascism. They're inducing panic. And we can do the exact same thing. But the problem is, do you want people thinking in a panic? Because most people don't think well in a panic. So it's like you have to balance getting people to focus, okay, saying this is important, with people freaking out. <laughs> we don't want people freaking out, but we want people to say, you know what, this, this is going to affect your life very directly. There are some smart decisions that can be made about our recovery and deficit reduction, but that's not being talked about. This is why we need smart people to really get involved instead of saying we're going to let the extremists in the House of Representatives run our country. You know, because if we submit to that, we are in so much trouble. Like all your plans for the future, they're in jeopardy if we just submit to all that extremism. You know, so like all your friends who say, I don't have time, like you just have to get them to understand that their personal plans are dependent on a stable economy. And we're not going to get there at this rate. Let's suppose that we all got on our Facebook page at the same time, OK, with one message. Download this flyer. Put it on your window. Everyone show up at Bank of America. We come up with a tweetable slogan, OK, <laughs> that we put on Facebook, that we put on Twitter. We can make that go viral. This is how it started in Egypt, an idea that just goes viral. That's what we need. People are tired of being in fear, contracted, fighting. They want something else. So we can give them that something else. Especially, people are dying for people like you, young people. Everybody in this room, if we took a picture of this room, we should take a picture of this room. You know, <laughs> seriously. Saying, these people at Wesleyan, these kids, want to change the world. Do you know how much that would like, like people on at the coffee party page would weep because, <laughs> no seriously, they would weep because they, they want to feel hopeful. Seriously, we should do that. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> like if, if, you know, okay, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, seriously, they so desperately want young people to be out there in the front, just like Egypt. All those young people in Egypt that made people go, oh my god, there's hope in the world, right? You guys can do the exact same thing, because you're young. People symbolize, see that with hope and future. With Eric and me, it's a little bit more difficult, because we're, we're not young anymore. So are you suggesting we, yeah. we uh, start a revolution? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, you can do it. No, I'm serious. You guys can decide right here to like, do something together. And just do it even in that spirit of, let's see if it will happen. Let's see what will happen. <coughs> don't you want, aren't you curious? Sure. What are we going to do? I, yeah, I, just don't think I, I, don't know what to, I don't know what I want. I don't, I don't know that I'm like, ready to do something like that. OK, who's ready? Who, 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 someone who's, tell me something that you would like to see change. I'd like to see Planned Parenthood not be defunded. OK, great. Anybody else? I know all of you guys have at least one thing you would like to see change.